What is up? I'm Surgeon Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Today we're going to be talking about modding uh, this 3D printer. This is my $125 Tron XY X1 3D printer. I've already done an unboxing impressions video of this and a final review of this printer. And generally it's performed pretty admirably, but it is a very inexpensive printer and there are a lot of things that I wanted to improve upon that I mentioned in my review. and these mods uh, kind of sort out most of that. So I'm gonna go through pretty much everything that I've done to this guy. I'm gonna try to get you guys caught up and have links to absolutely every product and tool that I use to pull this off, as well as all of the different files from Thingiverse and even the files that I've kind of custom done in the description below. So check those out. Let's get into it. I'm gonna to try to go over all the mods and group them in ways that make sense. We're gonna start on the Y axis for this guy. And the first mod I did was make a magnetic build plate. Now these are all the rage. A lot of uh, printers, manufacturers are starting to put this on their printer. Um, companies like uh, BuildTac offer a flex plate system that you can get um, you know, uh, aftermarket for almost any printer. This is a much more low tech version and a DIY version that utilizes neodymium magnets and or Order to hold the bed plate down to the uh, leveling screws that are in the build plate. So basically I just uh, took a drill bit, a Forstner bit, this is a quarter inch Forstner bit, and drilled out uh, some spacing, um, enough to, uh, to have clearance for the neodymium magnets. And then I used a countersinking bit in order to countersink it so that the screw would um, sit even lower. Basically put the neodymium magnets in there, made sure it was nice and flush, that they weren't standing proud of the build plate surface, put on a tiny drop of CA glue, your typical kind of crazy glue, and then put the build plate on there and let it dry. You don't want to use too much CA glue or else it could fall over into um, where the screw, the recess, and then you've kind of glued your build plate down to, uh, to, the, to the carriage and you don't want that. So once that dried and set, I took it off and then put more glue around the edge and uh, used some Insta-Set in order to uh, make sure that that didn't kind of um, move around or anything like that. But over Overall, I'm very happy with this modification. It makes so much sense to, to, to be doing this on pretty much every single printer nowadays. Um, you know, now that we're getting a lot of the kinematics and stuff refined and the hot ends and stuff like that, uh, ease of use things like that are an absolute great. So even if you're looking for a new printer, definitely keep that in mind. One of the things I love the most about it is that it gets rid of those stock binder clips or bulk doll clips if you're um, from across the seas and uh, gives you a lot of uh, your print area back because this is only 150 by 150 and uh, since you know it's pretty small, you want to be able to utilize as much as that as possible. And now with this, I can print you know edge to edge on all four sides, and I don't have those binder clips in the way, which can also get kind of bumped into and knocked off when you're homing the machine. You have to kind of make sure that uh, the, the nozzle isn't going to bump into any of those. I definitely recommend it. It makes getting prints off the build plate a lot easier. When you're done with the build, you just pop it off, flex it in that direction, flex it in that direction. You can usually just peel. The prints right off. Also, for cleaning this, um, this isn't a heated bed, so I do have to use glue stick. I typically use this Elmer's PVA uh, school glue stick, and after a while, there's a lot of residue on the surface, so I'll go ahead and just take this over to the sink, run some hot water, clean it off, bring it back, apply more glue, and you're good to go. So, great mod. I think the person who originally brought this to my attention was a guy named Chris Wesley. I mentioned him in my review. He's done quite a few mods to this printer, so I'll have a link to his video uh, in the description. Go check him out and see if there's any other mods that he's done that you might want to take advantage of. One of the biggest problems with this printer that I noted in my review was the amount of play that there used to be in the uh, Y-axis carriage. Uh, it used to just wobble a whole bunch. There's a little bit of play in there, but not a whole lot more than I've seen on much higher quality printers. I mean, ideally there will be none. And unfortunately, Tron XY chose to not use eccentric nuts uh, when they put this together. If they had used eccentric nuts, you could just, um, just 
get those wheels pulled onto the extrusion uh, at the perfect uh, kind of tension, but unfortunately they don't. So one thing, uh, one solution people have found to do is to print a bracket that will pull the wheels closer to the extrusion so you don't have as much play. It's a really easy 3D print. I of course printed it on this machine. I'll have a link in the description below. It actually replaces the white spacers that come with the printer. So you can just toss those in the bag. Um, I've done a lot of that. I've got a whole little bag full of some of the original parts that I've swapped off. But yeah, that definitely helps a lot in terms of that play. So having the wheel riding the extrusion nice and smooth has definitely helped improve prints. There's just not as much wiggle in the machine. So that first mod involved um, a little bit of disassembly of this Y carriage. So while you're at it, I recommend maybe going ahead and adding some belt tensioners. Um, one problem a lot of people have when they first get their printers is not tensioning the belts enough and it can lead to just some slop and um, vibrations uh, when, the, uh, when the carriage is going back and forth. So if you tighten up your belts, it'll get rid of a lot of that. And these are very simple belt tensioner that I got off of Thingiverse. Um, I'll have linked below and I liked it because it doesn't have a whole bunch of hardware in order to get it hooked on to um, where they go. I actually have one for the X and for the Y, but um, it just uses the tension of the belt to hold it on there. Um, it utilizes the slots in the extrusion and it has that uh, positive of that negative profile. So it just slides in there and you know, you can torque it a little bit, um, but you know, the natural motion of the belt is not going to be pulling this in a manner that um, is going to cause a problem that it will ever pop off or break or anything like that. It does utilize the hardware in terms of the idlers that came with the machine, but I did add a couple additional spacers um, in there in order to kind of move the belt so that they uh, it aligned with the extrusion a little bit better. Um, the bearing that's in there doesn't uh, sit, you know, necessarily 100% in line with the extrusion. So I used a couple spacers to move it over. And if you're going to be disassembling your machine, modding it, um, you're going to be, you know, removing your belts and stuff like that every once in a while. And, you know, zip tying them every single time it can be a little bit of a, a pain holding them, you know, and pulling them tight and putting the zip tie on there and not losing that slack. So once you have uh, one of these tensioners on there, you can just hook it back up, get it fairly taut and then tighten it to um, kind of that exact perfect level. So one of the last things I recommend doing while you have some of the bed disassembled is adding, is replacing the wing nuts with these uh, M3 thumb wheel screws. You will have to pick up some M3 nuts to replace the, the wing nuts and those M3 lock uh, into these thumb wheels and it just makes leveling so much less of a pain. The wing nuts can be a little difficult to kind of get your hand in the right situation depending which way they're facing. Sometimes you're just trying to move one of these corners up by less than 100 microns or move it down by that much and just being able to kind of fine tune it is really, really nice. It does have numbers on there. I don't find myself using it. I guess you could kind of figure out how many different segments uh, aligns to how how much of a Z offset and things like that. And that would be great if you choose to do that. In particular, this back left one was always a pain for me because it's offset from the rest. And being so makes it that you have to uh, tighten it and untighten it to move uh, more or less in order to move it the same amount. So having that, uh, these thumb screws has been a real nice uh, benefit. Um, I'll have the link to in Thingiverse. Um, really, really simple, really, really fast. And the last thing, while uh, you have it disassembled, if you're going to do a Pi mount, a Pi camera mount that goes on your Y axis bed, then um, you can go ahead and put that on while you have this all disassembled and you won't have to disassemble it and reassemble it again. But I'll be talking about the Pi later in a lot more detail. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm really psyched to keep bringing you guys content on 3D printing. I will be using 3D printers to mod other things like in my setup, um, some skateboard stuff I'm doing, some PC stuff I'm building. Um, so really, really excited about those projects as well. So that is it. Thank you guys once again for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.